Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at this HP Compaq 8510P business class laptop. This machine came out sometime in the middle of 2008, which puts it in the Windows Vista era. However, this machine isn't running Windows Vista anymore, it's now running Windows 10 Pro 64-bit. So, what are the specs of this machine? Inside, we have an Intel Core 2 Duo processor running at 2.4 GHz with 4 GB of DDR2 memory. Now, some sources say that this machine can only support up to 4 GB of memory, but I haven't tested anything higher than that since when I got this machine, it already had 4 gigs installed, and I really didn't have any need to upgrade it past 4 GB since I don't really use it for anything that needs more than 4 gigs. As for the display, we have a 15.4 inch widescreen panel with the ATI Mobility Radeon HD 2600 graphics which uses 256 megabytes of video memory. Inside is also a 120 gigabyte hard drive which is the original to this machine in addition to a DVD drive as well. So let's take a look around. On the left hand side of the machine we will find some ports. Working from left to right, we have a Kensington lock port, Ethernet, mini firewire, ventilation for the processor, HDMI, two USB 2.0 ports, and some different card slots here as well. On the bottom we have SD, right above that is SC, and at the top is an expansion card slot. On the right hand side of the machine, we will find some more ports, again working from left to right. We have audio out, audio in, two USB 2.0 ports, a DVD drive with LightScribe, and a modem. At the back of the machine, we will find our battery in the middle, and on the right hand side, we will find our VGA video out, in addition to our charging port. On the front of the machine, on the left hand side, we will find some status indicator lights for wireless, power, charging, and hard drive activity. At the bottom we will find a strip of speakers. There's only two of them, but it looks like a whole strip. It does provide somewhat of a stereo experience, but it depends on how you're using the machine is how well of an experience you will receive. On the lid itself, you can see a little mechanism here. You just push it over and the machine will release its screen. All I have to do is push it back down and it'll latch back into place. On the bottom of the machine we will find plenty of fun stuff. At the top we will find our battery again, and to release it all you have to do is move both of these little clips over and it'll pop right on out. Below that we can find this uh, slot here which connects to a docking station which provides plenty of other ports. I do not have a docking station for this machine, but it probably would be a nice accessory to have. Beneath that we have a little door which we can open up to add an additional battery to this machine. So we have two batteries. Below that we have our memory access door. Of course here is the fan for the CPU which then blows out the side over here. We have a little slot to hold some type of card but it's just full of information. Down here we have our hard drive with our Windows COA on it. Next to that we have some serial number information, and that's about it for the bottom of the machine. Opening the machine up we will find our 15.4 inch display. We do not have a camera here at the top, however at the bottom we can find our HP logo in addition to some type of a receiver for my guess is a wireless remote. Below the screen we will of course find our keyboard, and above the keyboard are some capacitive touch buttons. So the only physical button is the power button here. Next to that we have some type of information button, wireless to turn the wireless card on and off, projection if you're going to set it up to do some type of a presentation, we have mute for the audio, and this slider here, which you just slide with your finger to turn the volume up and down. And I'll demonstrate each of these buttons when we turn the machine on, as the functionality still exists in Windows 10. Over here we will find a microphone. Down here we will find a fingerprint sensor, you know, for reading your fingerprint. Of course we have our stickers for the Intel Centrino, and of course that needed to have a certain type of chipset 
wireless card and some type of an Intel Core processor inside of it at the time to get the Intel Centrino sticker on the machine. Of course, in the middle of the keyboard, we will find our little nub for using the mouse. If you're not into that, you can of course use the trackpad here at the bottom. Either way, you have three buttons here for both right and left click. The middle button, I haven't really figured out what it does yet. I'm guessing Windows 10 doesn't have functionality for it anymore. So, let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Here we go. So as I may have previously mentioned, when this machine first shipped, it shipped with Windows Vista Business. Of course, I have since upgraded it from Windows 7 to Windows 10 Pro. When I received this machine, it had a fresh install of Windows 7 Professional. And uh, through the upgrade program, I was able to get it up to Windows 10 Pro. This machine does take a quite a long time to load everything up, but once everything's loaded, it's actually pretty decent. You may notice some checkerboarding on the screen and some wavy lines. That's just uh, the camera picking that up, and it's also because the screen is on its dimmest, or almost dimmest, setting. So we'll go ahead and click over here, and we'll brighten that up since we're at 0%. There. Now hopefully we'll be able to see it better. Sure. So we can see that Windows is still thinking in the background and given, getting everything loaded up. Of course it likes to take a little bit amount of time to uh, turn everything on in the background. One thing that I like to do with Windows is turn off as many uh, programs that start up when you turn on the computer as possible. That definitely speeds up startup time and you don't need applications uh, turning on right when you turn on the computer if you're not going to use them. That doesn't make any sense. So you may be able to hear the fan uh, revving up here a little bit, and that's because two of the feet on the bottom of the machine are actually missing. So it's a little flatter to the table than it should be, so it's really trying to suck air as much as it can. Anyway, uh, now that we've given Windows a little bit of a time to think, Let's go ahead and take a look at Firefox here. It'll also take a little bit of a time to uh, open up for us, but we definitely have, obviously with Windows 10, up-to-date versions of everything on here. This machine has not received the creator's update yet, but I have, uh, I do know that it will be coming to this machine soon. It's definitely in the updates list. So, here we have Firefox. Took a second or two to come up, but once it's up, we will be running just fine. We'll go ahead and take a look at what version it is for you. Version 54, this is the most up-to-date one. We are running a 64-bit operating system on here, however Firefox seemed to have installed itself in 32-bit. But that's okay, works just fine. We'll go ahead and go to the lighting site here, if I can, you know, spell it correctly. That would probably help. So, go ahead and go to the main page here. And all that works just fine. Now, you can't do two-finger scrolling on this small trackpad, however, on the right-hand side, where you may have noticed some dashes, you can run your finger up and down, and you can scroll from there. So that's a pretty nice feature here as well. Just put your finger in that area, and you can scroll. Very nice, and it scrolls pretty well as two. So, we'll go ahead and also take a look at YouTube. And here it is. YouTube runs just fine on this machine. I haven't had any problems with it. You can see it's loading this advertisement here at the top just fine. You can also use the sidebar here to scroll if you're a little more used to that. And we can see it's loading everything up here. Loads all the images really fast. 
and the advertisement is working just fine as well. So you can throw pretty much any website at this machine with Windows 10 and it works just fine. Surprisingly, you think that maybe updating it a little too far past what it originally was might have slowed it down, but it, I don't think it did at all, really. So you can throw anything at this machine and it seems to run it just fine. Of course, I also have Office 2010 on this machine. That's my favorite version of Office. I learned the inside and outside of it um, in many different classes when I was in high school. So I know this, all the uh, 2010 uh, products very well. So I usually stick with uh, Office 2010. Of course, now we're up to Office 2000 or 2016, excuse me. Um, but however, with 2016, you do need a license that you update every month or every year or something like that. I believe 2013 was the last version to have an actual product key where you can put it in and never have to bother with it again. And that's what uh, Office 2010 here is as well. You put in the key and you're done for good, which is very, very nice. So here we have a Word. That works absolutely fine, and so does Excel and all the other products. We'll go ahead and take a look at some of the applications on here. There's many different things on here that I've installed to mess around with. I do a lot of testing on this computer using different applications, as it works pretty well for that. So all these applications that are on here, many of them are applications that actually come with Windows 10. Uh, and uh, some of the other ones are ones that I've installed just to play with and see what they do. So this is kind of my testing computer and trying out different Windows applications. Of course, you do have iTunes on here and any other application that'll run on Windows 10, like I've said, works pretty well on this machine. I've tested many different applications on here and messed around with them and they all work very well. So anyway, this machine still does very good here in 2017, and I use it quite a bit for just testing purposes. So anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this video, and also please comment, rate, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.